and I have been doing this kind of mapping. We built this tool five years ago. It's been evolving. Um, we've been doing mapping using Kumu for about seven years. And so we've been doing this kind of work for roughly seven or eight years. We did data visualization kinds of work before that and data gathering before that. Um, and so we've been doing this work for quite a while and we've been inviting people to come and share their maps uh, in these on-ramps for the last eight months. And sometimes it's hard to find somebody. And I, I somewhere along the line said, you know, we just need to have a map of this particular group so that I can share. I always have a good up-to-date working map that we can share with new people because I don't always have permission to share our client maps because they're private. And I, you know, I'm not going to just start showing their data to, in, you know, on in a situation where we're going to record it. Um, so that was one of the reasons for doing this. But another reason for doing this was that um, as we've been doing this work, I always have ideas and maybe they're really bad ideas and maybe they're great ideas or maybe they're, you know, the foundation of a good idea, but they need to evolve some to get to a good idea point. And I um, am not usually the boss of the map. So <laughs> not that a map needs a boss, but often there's a community there that uh, is hesitant to go where my ideas uh, incl would incline us to go. And they're like, oh, that's a great idea, but we're not going to do that, Christine. Or, but uh, that's too politically sensitive, or that just seems too hard. Um, and so the other point of this particular map for me was to say, okay, no one has to do anything in this map. We're not requiring anything, but, but I need a place to test out some of the ideas that we have and see how they work and what better population to test them with than other people who are interested in social system mapping and would be interested in the outcome of the tests and who are um, have some kind of investment or at least interest in this practice. So this map is both uh, a, an opportunity to have something useful to share all the time. Uh, it's also an opportunity to test out ideas and to learn together. So the other, the other challenge is that when it gets to in, in mapping, we say there's the visionary, there's the, there's three hats. There's a visionary, that's the person who inspires the network to do the, to, to, to create a map. They get the ball started. They help people understand what's needed. Um, so they catalyze the process. Then there are the technicians or the mappers, and they're the ones who handle the technical, the getting the data from some app into Kumu, deck, getting the maps set up the way we want to look at them, and we are going to dig into that in a minute. Um, and then what we've discovered is that um, having a map isn't enough. So once you have your map, then if you really want to have that be a tool for system change, then you have to help your network understand how to use the tool. And a big piece of the use of the tool is what we call sense making. So there's learning how to navigate, that's fairly simple. And then there's sense making, which is learning how to really think about your network as a system and how to dig into the map to learn what can be learned from it and take action on based on that. And sense making, um, and just to, uh, just to, when I say this is all really new, it's all really, I know that because Kumu is about eight years old and before Kumu, and which Kumu changed the paradigm of how you can do mapping because now you can share your map online and anybody can dig into it. So that sort of takes away one level of top-down expert analysis paradigm and turns it more into middle and bottom up and out synthesis uh, you know, generating agency and, and transparency for a whole network. So it's a different paradigm that's possible with Kumu. You can still use it the old way, but now you could start to use it a, a new way. And then some app is the only tool that does what it does to make that data be live and constantly updatable as well as editable. So the two tools that have enabled this paradigm did not exist eight years ago. They've existed together for about five years or four years. Um, and 
um, because my partner and I built the, the tool, I kind of know everybody who's doing this work. So, or at least I know of the, I know they exist. I know that they're using the tools and I, most of my talk to. So, um, I actually am not, um, making it up when I say, you know, I, I know pretty much everybody who's mapping in this way. There's lots of other ways of mapping and, of, and uh, I don't know all of that and I'm not an expert on all of that, but to do it in this way, I know most of the people and it's really new. So when I say we're just learning how to do sense making with these maps, I'm I, like, I'm, I'm literally mean that. <laughs> I mean, it's like there's, you know, five of us on the planet who've gotten <clears throat> enough experience in a, you know, with a, a map of enough longevity to actually have a need for that. So that's a slight exaggeration, but not much. So <clears throat> the other purpose for this map is that, and part of the challenge with sense making is that if it's not your network, it's hard to actually figure out how to make sense of it. Because if it's not making sense to you when you look at it, like, I don't know these people, I don't know their goals. It's so abstract. It's hard to come up with what kind of activities could we have. Um, and Sarah and I have worked a lot on that and we've, we've made a lot of progress in big part. That's because we work with Sarah's map and it makes sense to her. I mean, she's the one who's digging into it. So anyway, this one hopefully will help the sense makers have a map that's meaningful to them. That's about some of their work to, um, to sense make with. Okay. So that was a long winded intro. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with SumApp and Kuma, I'm going to quickly just show you. This is SumApp. SumApp gathers the data for the mapping. It gathers the data from the people in the network, directly from them, and it structures the data and outputs it in a way that it works perfectly with Kumu. So you don't have to, uh, with any other tool you use, you have to rearrange the, the data in a bunch of ways so that you can get it to, to play nice with Kumu and it's uh, a pretty big headache. So this is um, when, so here is the, the tool that Tim and I made. Um, we ask you, it, so this all is editable and you just can input whatever information seems useful. And then people can load a picture of themselves and make a little quick tweet size bio of themselves. In the profile, um, you, any survey questions you want can be put in here. They can be changed, they can be added to, they can be removed. If you've got questions and you've gathered a bunch of data and you realize that the wording is not so great, you can just change that wording and you won't lose the data. So the, so the idea is to make it as, as malleable as possible without losing data that people have already put in. So, um, and just one of the things that I wanted to experiment with when we we're in making this map is I got really much more specific in my questions about people's relationship to the field of mapping and to the skill sets needed in mapping because it often feels to me like if in, 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 in most maps, these kinds of questions are really high level and really general. And my gut feeling is that if we could get them more and more specific um, to the actual individuals uh, and to the field that you're dealing with, it might be easier to make sense with it. It might be easier to take action on it, et cetera. So, um, so that's one of the things I was doing was getting much more specific. Um, then this is for those of you who haven't aren't familiar, what we call the connections panel and each one of these. So everybody who's on the map shows up here and each person who shows up here, if you click on their tile, like I just did, um, <clears throat> there is a sort of a mini survey that is about my relationship in this con in this in this instance to Drew Mackey. So Drew Mackey is a mapper. This is a survey about my relationship to Drew. Um, and so I go through here and I click on who do I know. In this particular instance, I know a lot of people. So um, I had a lot of uh, responses to to put in here. And this is probably the most extensive connection tiles <laughs> connect set of connection options that anybody's, the, m most people usually have one or two, um, but I put a bunch in because there were things I wanted to learn from that and we'll see if that was any a good idea or not. But um, so, th so that's the, the data input and then you can, and I'm not gonna click on this because I, it's gonna take a moment to load, but then you can, you take the data that's coming in from some app 
and it's just constantly coming in. It's not like I have to start it and then stop it like a normal survey. And you can put a live link into Kumu and then um, make your map in Kumu and then you can put an embeds of the map back into the Sum App interface so that people can just get, at, get to their map from Sum App instead of having to go into another platform, which is Kumu. Okay, so this is um, just another tab of the same thing. So if I went back here, I, we'd see what I just showed you, but I don't want to do that. Um, so this is the map. Um, so I'm, I'm just sort of hesitating because partly I'm like wanting to show you things and partly I'm wanting to explain why they, I'm just sort of uh, choosing my words here. Um, so this is, this is, Sarah and I had this sort of big aha moments last fall when we were preparing for an event. And out of those aha moments, we started making views in Kumu a little differently than we had previously. One of which is now we've got some little um, buttons that give you some navigation tips. So those are helpful and those are all, you can make that up and you can change how you want this. So the map you're seeing right now is, is actually built in Kumu. And then, like I said, it's embedded here so we can interface with it here, but you'd work with it in Kumu. And one of the things that we were trying to do, or maybe the big thing we were trying to do with our new way of presenting our views, was what we've discovered over the last several years is that when people who are not familiar with this kind of mapping, when the first thing you do is you dump them into a view that's got all these different colors, different sizes, the nodes are all different sizes and different colors and their connections are different sizes and different colors and they're all like moving around and it's a big, it's a big hairball. Most people sort of go, you know, and their brains freeze up and they don't, it's even though you can show them how to interact with each element and you can show them how to filter and you can show them how to, how to read it, they're already just sort of overwhelmed enough from that first view that they're not really tracking and their brains kind of shut down. Now, some people are geeks and geeks will just go, oh, this is great and they'll dig in. But um, that's in my experience, you know, 2% of the population. So what we, re we realized was really helpful. So we start with a directory view. So this, what you're looking at here is a directory view and it just has a list of all the people in the map. And if you click on the side panel, for some reason, my picture is not showing up, but these are my responses to the questions in the survey. Here's Kara's side panel. So we can, um, if we're clicking on a person, this side panel becomes a representation of their information. Um, and we can always just close that and get back to the side, the side panel view. And we can open and close that like that. So everybody's the same size in this. They're all the same color. They either have a picture or they don't. Um, but it's just, we're calling this, we call this directory view. It does not show us um, their relationships to each other or to anything else. But so this is relatively unoverwhelming. And then we can say, okay, I want to filter by, like, let's just do this. Let's just see who is supportive but not invested. Okay, that's great. Who is, has spent time and money learning about social system mapping? And who is, for whom is it, would they say it's a main component of their work? Um, I think that not everybody, oops, answered all those questions. So when we filter, we don't end up, you know, we've got five, four, three, there's more people than that. So not everybody answered that question. And that's fine. That means it's not a relevant question for them. Um, but for the, for the people who did, we can filter on that. We can filter on what are the skills that they need help with, that they want to learn. Um, let's say who's trying to learn um, how to catalyze a community to do mapping. There's the people who are learning that. So we can start to filter. Now, in other instances, those filters might be things like what state are you in, or they might be things like what's your primary identity, whatever are the relevant dimensions for that particular network. Um, and those are different. So obviously the questions in this map are what the relevant, the, the dimensions that are relevant for this field, for the social system mapping field and for learning together. Um, in Sarah's network, there are going to be things like um, climate change uh, goals that you're working on or um, kinds of expertise around activism around climate change. There, there's a whole different set of dimensions, but we can still filter by them 
in this view. So first we teach people to filter um, and that's relatively easy and there's not much else that, and, and, and we can just, oh, this little dot here. So my partner, Tim, likes to play with all the bells and whistles. So I just toggled on the pop-up and now if we just hover over, we get a pop-up of some of the most relevant dimensions. So you don't even have to click. So we can turn that off or on. I like to turn it off because it hides people. It just makes it hard to navigate sometimes. But so that can go off and on. So that's the directory view. It's relatively simple. The next view is, so what we're doing is we're trying to go, we're trying to make views that go from relatively simple to a little bit more complex and a little bit more complex till we get to the place that like for, for Sarah or me, there's the really juicy parts are when we get to where we've got a lot of stuff going on and we can start to step back and look at patterns across the network. Um, but what we've learned is people need to be sort of take that a step at a time. And a lot of people never get to that point where Sarah and I are, you know, like to, you know, get all excited. But, um, but so we want to just make it so that they can get as, as far in as it's useful for them. Sarah, you're looking like you need to say something. I was going to say something and that, that face was actually because my headset just said battery low too. But uh, <laughs> Mariana had a very excellent question, a quick clarifying question that I think you should answer. And that's, oh. you know, these filters that we're looking at here, is this a Kumu option or is this a thumb app option? Good question. So they're defined, in fact, let me just quickly go to Kumu. Um, so this is the Kumu interface. Um, I'm signing into my account. I was already signed in. So this is the map in Kumu. And um, so this is the same map, except here it is directly in Kumu where I can edit it and, and um, where we can, so um, you'll see like these particular things are not, don't show up in the embedded version because these are places, uh, things we can, so like I can actually go in and, and edit here. So these things, hang on. Um, this is the settings are like these controls are filtering. So this is, this is when we say Tim is the sort of the wizard of this stuff. This is another reason why we wanted to have a, a nice map is because then people can actually learn the code like David's interested in, in actually working in Kumu and he can start to say, how did Tim do that in their map? And then he can come in here and look look at the code and, and, um, and copy it and, and use it at his own instance. So the dimensions, I'm gonna just show you, are in here. So this is a dimension and it's, it's, you, don't need to, you don't need to really worry about this. this. All of this information just comes from some app into Kumu. And then your decorations or your filtering um, are, are created in Kumu. Did that, Martha, did that answer that well enough? Or is there more? Okay, you can unmute yourself and talk too, if you feel like it, you don't have to. Okay. <laughs> or Mariana, sorry. Yeah, no, we're, we, we welcome your voices and your faces. So, um, okay. So I'm gonna go back to this just a little bit more. Um, so another often in maps, there's um, uh, in networks, people, one of the main uses people use these kind of maps for is to find out who has what skills to offer that they would like to contribute to the network and who has what need for skills or kinds of support that they would like to get from the network. So this is often uh, a next view because this is still not too complex. Um, what we can see here is that if we click on Barbara, uh, oh, and we can, um, now we can learn how to focus. So we click on a person and focus, and now we can see that this green means she um, has a skill at this and she's willing to, to teach others. And all of these others, um, green or the dotted links mean that she needs help with that. She wants to learn how to do these things. So now we can start to, um, and let's see if we put that on, then I don't know what that's doing. I can't, I can't. Tim's always experimenting. Um, I can't always deal with his experiments. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing now? Um, but so what we can do then is we can say, okay, understanding how it all fits together, 
I want to see who's strong in that. And so me and Maya and Sarah, Laura, and then so if I were Barbara, who wants to learn more about that, I'm, she might, Barbara might reach out to Catherine or Maya or me or Sarah, or she might know, okay, when they're doing an on-ramp or they're, do, you know, leading a deep dive, then I for sure want to show up with that because I know that they have that skill set. So that's an offers and asks view. It's, again, totally dependent on your network, what the kinds of offers and asks might be in there. They could be things like, um, you know, uh, vehicles, meeting space, s facilitation skills, legal skills. They could be skills, they could be material assets, they could be anything that is important and relevant for your network. Um, and so that's usually the directory and then we go to the offers and asks and doing the offers and asks people start to learn how to focus and that, that they can, there's, a, there's ways to sort of quickly dig in and find out um, who they might be able to get help from or partner up with. The next one is the involvement one, and this is the one that's more like a classic social network analysis. Uh, it has um, the relationships. We're still, we're still able to filter, so now we've got this sort of filter language going on. It's like, okay, this thing behaves the same every time on every view that you see it, so we can always go and filter in that way. And then, but now we have this other, this new dimension of these relationships um, and then we can do a popover that shows if if Sarah oh it just pops over the relationships I'm not sure we're still learning some of these functionalities and how they interact with each other especially in the context of a lot of questions um, for, for relationships it becomes a little confusing just in in Kumu and just in all of us ourselves wrapping our head around how to dig into them but a very fundamental dimension that most people have is this, how strong is the relationship, which is just a very uh, simple ranking. And so we can see, okay, who in the network just knows each other? Uh, who has generative interactions? And then who collaborates together? So now you can start to see the different uh, um, relative strengths in the, re in the network. Um, and then what you can do with that is to start to figure, okay, among the people who want to be able to do sense making, you know, who's, who's in that camp and uh, who's already working together and who's not already working together um, and start to make introductions or start to reach out. And so now it's starting to get uh, a little more complex and a little less straightforward. What do I do with this information? But this is where we feel like um, the actual, you know, ability to, to generate more agency within the network and to start to shift the dynamics in the network for helping to create systems change is starts in these, uh, at these deeper, more complex levels. So that's the, um, the involvement view or the classic SNA view. And then we have what we call in the weeds where we've got, we can cluster and filter and, and do like this, uh, a bunch of overlapping behaviors. So this is clustering. You saw clustering in the asks and offers. Um, there's a, a non-human node at the middle and then there's people uh, who've, set, who've expressed interest in that. That's clustering. Um, let's say we'll cluster on skills needed and then we can cluster on how many people are It's a main component of their work and for whom that's a skill needed So we can now we can start to dig even deeper and think more strategically and more systemically and then there's the bird's eye view um, Which enables us to do a thing called showcasing It's not going to be really meaningful for this map at this point in time, but um, for instance with Sarah's map where there's several hundred, more than 400 people in the map and they're spread across st states in different issue areas when we showcase. The map itself, the structure of the, of the network, the social relationships in the network stays, stays static. So like when we filter, we're taking off everybody who isn't, um, doesn't relate to that filter and that changes the structure. Here we keep the structure, 
But then we say, we look at, um, what we're gonna do is highlight the people who answered in a certain way in relation to the overall structure. So for instance, with Sarah's map, we get a thing where we can start to see some states are more connected to each other or more connected across the network or some issue areas are very connected and other issue areas are far less interconnected among the people. And so then that gives Sarah some, some food for thought about what do they, you know, do they need to do convenings or do they need to be inter doing introductions or what can they do to help find those relatively, maybe they're weaker, maybe they're wiser. We don't really know. It could be one or the other, but, but she can start to look at the patterns and see what's going on and think about that more. Okay, that was a lot of talking. I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna st uh, stop talking. <laughs> And Sarah, you can take it over. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, so we're open for questions. I mean, we're really open, open floor night now. So um, if you have any questions, if you wanted to get any clarity about some of the things that Christine had just shared, um, again, you can either use the chat function or as Christine said too, like feel free to take yourself off of mute. We love hearing other voices in here. Yeah. What were some of the things you noticed? What were some of the things that are inspiring you or that you're wondering about? So I have a couple of questions. Hi, this is Maria. Great. Right. Um, well, first of all, it's my first, uh, I've tried to make these sessions and so it's the first time I finally make. And it's really cool to see some app. Wow, that like really uh, eliminates a ton of work. Uh, in inputting data into Kumu, so congrats on that. I'm really excited to dig into that as well. I have two quick questions. One, um, so I didn't fill out my profile, for example, to join the map. If I were to do that right now, would the data go into your, your map immediately? Yeah, you want to try it? I will. Yeah, I'll do it while somebody else is speaking so that I'm not taking time. Great. And I'll, and I'll do it real time. And the okay. other question is, are you willing to share this map so that we can look at your coding and interface? Like, is this a map that we can also play with to learn and do some adjustments to our own maps? Yes. So if you're, so once you're in the map, you'll have your own access under here. So you can go into the map and um, hang on. Let me just make sure that you can. Yeah. If you click your, so we don't have, so in, in actual in Kumu. Oh, it's not there either. In some maps, there's a, let me just have to see a map that's got one. Um, this is super irrelevant, but oh, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's a visual memory thing. So there's this little thing, this little uh, settings icon. Uh, opens. We can't see it. Do you want to share your screen, maybe, Christine? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot that I stopped sharing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So this is a different, totally different map, but. Um, in the, the settings are what we showed, what I opened earlier. And so those are there. You can, there's a, there's a setting that will enable you to hide the settings button. And I'm just telling you that because if we go here, the settings button is hidden, but if you hit T, you can always, in any map, any Kumu map, anywhere, no matter whether it's embedded or not, just click your T key and you can open to the editors. So you can actually, uh, you can't, you won't, you won't hurt anything if you edit in an embedded version of the map, which this is. So you can just feel free to go co copy things out and not worry that you might accidentally hurt something because you can't from this perspective. But yes, you'll start to be able to see um, how he did what he did. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it sounds trivial, but some of your visualizations, just the filter options, the bar on the on the bottom to show connections, like those are really helpful for sense making and yeah, for people that are self taught in Kumu, it can take forever to figure it yes. out. Yes, and yeah. and these are just tiny adjustments to really transform the power of the map. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, and and that's that's great for you to say that because um, that is. It is the, well, sense making, I think, is the, is the biggest hurdle that we've got to deal with, but, but getting a map to the point where it's really, it's really graceful for sense making and it's really so that you don't have to be a super technician, 
it takes a technician to get the map to that kind of a place. And, and that is one of the skills that we feel like really needs, we need to develop more people with that skill set. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah. Anyone else? I'll just stay in here in case we. Yeah, this, this is Mark. Hi, Mark. I got, I got a question. Hey, a um, couple questions. Just, just a little bit of background. I run a nonprofit that services, uh, provides services to the educational services to the leaders of local associations. So basically membership organizations. Mm -hmm. And a common problem for them is that the members don't actually know each other. They, they gather just occasionally, and there's probably a whole bunch of rich relationships that aren't really explored. So I have, uh, I do have my own Kumu experience just just as an asset map for for the um, for the nonprofit. But I'm really interested in seeing you know how we could leverage this approach as a strengthening tool for these associations. So the questions that keep rattling around my mind are, well, I know how to do this fairly well, you know, and I kind of picked up here, and, you know, I know how to advance on that. But when we're talking to folks who are, don't have a complete focus on this, what is the um, shortcuts, quote unquote, um, for, uh, for an organization to establish this capability and then what's the easiest way to get participants to um, actually contribute? Sarah, do you want to talk about that? <laughs> there are no easy <laughs> There you go. I Next. Don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> no, so Mark, this is, I, I'm glad you said that because like, you know, this is something that has been uh, a challenge in our network. You know, as Christine said, I think we've done a really good job of overwhelming people in our network by showing really like complicated views right at the forefront. So people are like, oh, wow, cool. And I'm not touching that. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I think like what Christine described here is like a great first step. Like, how are you building this map in a way that like people's like first experience of it isn't overwhelming? It feels more similar or something that's like easier for them to use if they can step into. I think too, you know, really focusing on like our, our staff using this, right? Like I think it's helpful in my network that I've been sort of like the guardian of this and that I'm constantly like working with members, working with other staff, working with our steering committee, like really bringing this up and we're making a habit of using it all the time and really building it into existing processes. So, right, like, hey, you know, we're having like a staff retreat and we're always asking about this or that, like, how are we using the map to like lean in and use those conversations? Something else that we do then too with our members is that we really practice um, like putting the map and asking and inviting people to step into it around times when they're going to be coming together already. So like our annual meeting, for example, is a time when leading up to that, we're pushing people to join the map, give us your information. And then at the event, we not only have somebody at registration, so at registration, like, hey, you have all your materials, great. Have you joined the map? No. Well, you need to come over here and stop over here and talk with Sarah or Christine, and we're going to help you get on the map. And then I think, too, like having stories and showing the value of the map to the network also like reinforces that idea that like your data and information in this is really important. So actually at our annual meeting last year, we had a whole hour long session about this map and to talk about ways that it can help us improve our network over time. And then the last thing that we're doing, like this is part of like my, my long-term vision and dream here is, you know, for our network, we have like an online collaborative platform, right? So people are already like coming in there, they put in some profile information, and then we have this mapping work. And right now it's been a separate thing. What we're trying to do is we're trying to integrate these two in a little bit more meaningful way. How are the questions that we're asking people to give us about their profile? How can we use that to sync up with the map or pre-populate the map with information already? And then how can we link the SUMAP link, right? Because you get a unique link that's just for you. How can we connect that back to their commons profile for them? So it's easy for them to find that map and to tell us about their relationship to other people. So that's right. just some of what we're trying to do to help build that. But I think, I think it's a hurdle for everybody right now. Yeah. The, I think that last one is, is absolutely critical, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, enter, enter once and done, right? You, you know, yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. I already have all this stuff in LinkedIn at some time. Yeah. You know, how many more times should I enter it here? But 
but to your uh, to your other points, you know, showing the value of it to both organizations, yeah. formal or informal, as well as the individuals in them. Um, you know, that's the key thing because we're always asking somebody here to spend a little more time on something. So what, yep. what's their ROI? But the, yep. Thanks, sir. It's really good. Yep. Well, and just that brought up a couple things that I didn't say earlier, which was that. So if you already have a platform where you're asking people for profile information, then you have a duplication of, of effort and, you know, we're sort of, our vision is to get to the point where that's not a problem. But um, if you don't have that, the nice thing about some app is that we made it so that in all the other SNA tools, if you want to track changes over time or you want to, you know, track your network from year to year, you have to ask the whole network to do the whole thing all over again. In some app, you don't do that. The profile stays the same. Their data is, everyone has their own unique link. And, you know, I can go in once, you can say just once a year, go take a peek. I can go in and go, yep, that's all true. Yep, still true, still true, still, oh yeah, I should change that. I feel like I'm stronger with that now. And then I'm done. So, and then I can go into the connections and I can say, okay, I'm gonna sort by how connected am I, am, am I to these people? And I can say, oh yeah, Matthew, I've been working with him a lot. I can change that. I can upgrade him or, you know, say he, I have a strong relationship with him, but the rest I can say, yeah, those are still light connections. These are medium, these are stronger. And then I can just sort of look at them and say, oh, all I need, like I, I do know Catherine now, so I can do that. And then I can go fill in the rest later. Um, but you don't have to do everything. You, you don't have to respond to every single question every single time you, you want to look for updates. You just ask them to go in and make changes. And those mm -hmm. changes then will just show up right in the map right away. And the other thing I didn't mention was that you can have, and we this map is, is just started, so we don't have this going on with this one, but you can track changes over time. So you can say, this is what the map looked like in 2018, this is what it looked like in 2019, and this is what it looked like in 2020, because it's the same data set and you're just having people update it. And, and we can start to show how the relationships are changing and how the structure is changing and how the membership is changing. So um, that at least, I mean, that was a big thing for me was, I don't wanna make people do this every year, that sucks. Let's make a tool that was part of the making a tool was so that so that it can just stay open and just get updated. Um, and I just want to see if uh, Mariana's um, information is here yet. So <laughs> I'm I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, okay, so you're not done yet. Yeah. Okay. And just okay. connected to that last thing you said, Christine. Um, so it doesn't override uh, sort of baseline or prior year data. It creates sort of like a separate data set or. No, it's just, okay, so the, the profile will get updated. We don't keep the historical profile information, right. like my title has changed, that's not a super big relevance for the network, but the, um, we have a history of the connections. So it, you know, if you and I were not connected at all in 2018, um, and then we're connected in, we can, I can just go in and say, here's the time chunks, and they can be, we can change them whenever we want, they can be a year, or they can be quarters, or they can be, you know, this date to that date. Um, but whatever timeframes I, I put in there, then it will, the data will say, this is what the, everyone's connections look like in that time frame, and then this is what they look like in that time. So it will output all of that. And then you'll put some buttons in Kumu to filter so that it will show you the time, the changes over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good to know. I've tried to enter several, like, year data sets into Kumo and sometimes I feel the data overrides or I have to like save all the network stats for one year and then add others. So I just, I've just separated the maps. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, piles of data is messy and complicated no matter where you're getting it from, but, uh, and, and no matter what you're doing with it, but we work very hard with some app to make it as, um, as easy to a non super technical person as possible. So, and if you, you know, if you start playing with that and, and I don't know if you're in our Slack, but um, we have a Slack channel or a Slack team and people just ask questions about how to do this and how to do that. And we'll either give you a link to an article that will tell you how to do that or walk you through it, or at least answer your questions. So, Sarah. Hey, Christine, Hannah, Hannah also had a question in here about data and 
you know, she's saying she already has existing profile information, like through an annual survey. Is there, how easy or hard is it to then take that information data and then add it into the SUM app? Yeah, so we do have a feature that um, in tiers three and four, um, you can, uh, you just take your data, you have to um, format the headings in a special way so that uh, some app knows how to read the data, but you can load um, pre exist we call that loading pre-existing data into some app and there's um, on our help help desk, um, there's instructions on how to do that. Um, there's a kind of a bug in the feature right now, so give it a month before you play with it too extensively. But um, um, yes, that's, uh, you can do that. It's data related to individuals. To the, not, we can't load data related to the relationships, but we can load pre-existing data related to the individuals. Cool. Can I, can I ask a follow-up question on that? Yeah. Does that assume that everyone, the individuals all have access to some app? Do they all have profiles then, or can you load the pre-existing data for individuals that haven't yet joined a network? Yes. So in some app, um, in the back end, let's just see if we can, is that it? Yeah, so this is the list. So this is the, these are my projects in one of my accounts. And this is the, um, this is the project of the map that with the map that we were just looking at. And so if I go to manage members, I can either, uh, I can load a list of names and emails that I know, and um, they haven't been on the map yet. I'm, I'm volunteering them to be on the map and then um, they'll show up on in that data set. Um, I, so I can, as I'm doing that, I can load information that I already know about them. If I already, if I have information about them, that's demographic data, like where do they live, et cetera. I can load that here. Um, and then the other way people can get in is with an opt-in link. So there's, so either I can mm -hmm. redefine a body of a population or they can volunteer themselves. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. So if you add the email in, then it launch it it must send them some information to then join the network. I guess I'm wondering. That part, yeah. Can you so, start to create this before people join so that you have something for people to join? Yes, so that's part of our sort of our adoption uh, protocol is we get five people in the, you know, we get some people in the map and then we add more people. So we, we and we actually generally set up some app load some people, make a map in Kumu, embed the map into some app so that there's something for them to look at because that's such a huge, it's like until they have something real to look, something, it's not real, but something to look at, it's hard to get them to understand what the point is and to, and to appreciate why they should do this work. Um, but yes, and then you can just keep adding people as you go. I mean, you, you could, so you can either only have the five people mapped or you could have 50 people and only five people have taken the survey. There's a range of ways of handling that. It's very flexible. Did that help? I mean, I'm not sure I 100% sure I answered the question properly or what you needed, but. Yeah, that totally helped. Thank okay. You. And now we get Mariana's data is in there. So I'm gonna, oops, that's not the right one. I'm just gonna refresh so we and can. While you're Go yeah, ahead. and while you're looking at that too, David had a, uh, another technical question. So. He says, if I was interested in adding a skills willing to share as a portfolio element, would I be able to add it as a question? Yeah. Yep. By, by a portfolio element, I'm wondering if I'm understanding what you mean by that. David, feel free to take yourself off a of mute and jump in here too. Yeah. Yeah, Christine, I was wondering if, um, if my interest was being able to find people that had a skill maybe I um, needed, yep. or if I wanted to find people with um, skills that they might be able to uh, collaborate, yep. um, um, the, the portfolio itself does not actually have you know kind of a control where I, I i could just start listing things that um i have to share um oh 
So I think what you're saying is, is it, so if we go to here and we go to here, um, like, so the skills listed in this instance, um, like th this is our version of the skills. Right. But if it's I'm, a standardized list. Yes. And, and what you're getting at is, can you add something more? Uh, well, also, I mean, yeah, I mean, so for instance, say I would like to broadcast that I um, am an agile scrub master. Mm -hmm. um, how uh, uh, it, it would be good, I mean, to be able to um, broadcast yep. um, skills I am willing, I am, I am willing to share. Yeah. Uh, and, and how, how would I, would I do that? Or would I talk to the uh, well, owner? Yeah. So it would be, I mean, so, so there's, two, in, for instance, in this particular map, it's going to depend on the context and it's going to depend on how, how whoever's sponsoring the map wants to set it up. Um, usually there will be a limit to, I mean, unless the skills defined and the skills, the offers and asks, or what some people will call this, the, the, uh, the asset map component of it, the right. skills will be um, usually narrowly defined to be relevant to the network, it's to the, to the work of the network, if there's a specific, if the network has a specific goal, and they'll usually be not, you know, hundreds of them, because then it just becomes kind of not very useful. But, so there's usually a categorized set of skills, like we have here, that's a, a finite, um, non-overlapping set. But then the other thing that will, that will often happen is that there will be an open-ended, uh, some open-ended text. And here, you know, I said it like, what, what, which, what do you most feel like contributing? So this could be a skills, but it could be something more other than skills. But you could have just used the, verbalized this as, what other skills aren't listed. And then you can start to see are there trends of, oh, Scrum Master comes up several times where people are looking for that. And, and so you might move them into the categories as they get to be more frequently used. Um, yeah, like um, uh, the, the classic asset map is you, you meet with your neighbors mm -hmm. and you figure out who's a teacher, who's a plumber, yeah. who's a nurse, who's a gardener, yep. you know, and, and, and so you start, who's a babysitter, yep. right? And, and so by location, you can start to drill down into what are my, what are my local resources? Right. Yeah? Yeah. And, and, and extremely powerful. Yes. And so you can do, so, so you, you could do exactly that. Okay. Using this, you would just at some point you would you would find out what all the assets are or what all the resources. And you know, in fact, let's do one thing. Do you are you uh, able to hang out after? So we should we should probably wrap up so people can go. Okay. And then, yeah, Sarah, yeah, I'll let you can hang out. Yeah. Thanks. I should have thought of that. Go ahead. Sorry. No. <laughs> I get no, it's a really, it's a really great topic. It's a really great topic. And uh, something I didn't say at the beginning of this is that we do um, have an additional half hour after this um, for folks like David who have these really like great questions that we might want to dig in deeper to. Um, Christine is, is going to be willing to say afterwards to talk more about that. Um, but, you know, maybe just to wrap up here. Um, just kind of curious, like anything that folks want to share in terms of things that really like surprised you or inspired you or something that you, you learned from today's on-ramp session that you'd like to share with the group? Just thrilled to be part of this community. I hope to learn a lot and I see like huge advances from what I was aware of. So um, yeah, I just appreciate these spaces and how regularly they occur. I, I personally learned a ton. Good. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity here. A bunch of stuff to think about and in terms of how active I'll be, um, you know, community wise and We'll see, but, I'm, but my intentions are good right now. <laughs> <laughs> so put yourself on Thanks, the map. Mark. Yeah, 
and put yourself on the map, even if you're not going to stick around, just so we, you have that experience. Oh. That'd be great. Looks like Hannah also said thank you. She learned a lot. She's bringing this back to her team and see if it's a tool that they could use. Great. How many folks here are interested in staying for the that extra time here afterwards? Uh, David. David, for sure. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Mark, I'll, I'll hang around for a bit. There you go. I'm interested, but I have to jump off for another call. So thank you for this. It's really great. Yeah. Thanks for joining today, Jen. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, Martha, hello. Hi, it's been a great introduction. I have others on one of my network teams that are uh, more uh, moving toward the ninja, <laughs> interested in that, and I'm gonna pass this information on to them. I, I appreciate it as more of a user than designer of these at the moment, and uh, uh, we'll see how uh, closely to be involved, and I hope that um, I have someone else on the team that will also wanna be involved to make it more practical you know, that we'll actually use it. <laughs> great. Thanks. Yeah, great. great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Well, it was a pleasure to host you all today. I'm going to jump off the line, but like I said, Christine, she's going to be on here and you all can use the time freely to dive into any other deep topics or anything, any other burning questions you have.